What is going on guys? Will here. Welcome to the video. Today is all about fat loss myths that I've been circulating the gym and circulating the internet. I think all of us at one point in time have fallen for one of these myths and I think some of us still actually believe them. So by the end of today's video, hopefully we bust some myths and separate fact from fiction. Before we eat anything, with nutritional value, the first thing that we have to do is some fasted cardio. So the belief is that when you do cardio in a fasted state, you're using your fat as fuel as opposed to having a pre-workout meal in you, but it has been debunked many times that there's no difference between being fasted and being fed. And I would even argue that when you're fed, you can go harder and for longer, which is why Katie makes me go to the buffet before. For the fasted cardio today, we're gonna to be doing some HIT cardio because myth number two is that HIT is always better. And the fact that I'm not shredded means that this one is a quick bust, no pun intended. So HIT can be good, but it does have a lot of drawbacks to it. That being, it's harder to recover from, you can't do it all the time. And that high intensity training actually increases your appetite, making it harder to stick to a calorie deficit. So when I said HIT, someone's pretty close by and that is my mom. And today you're gonna to be taking me through a HIT workout? Of course. Okay, so yeah. what is it? Uh, we'll do some sprints, we'll do some mountain climbers, and we'll do some split jumps, and maybe I'll throw a little ab. So we, yeah, a little ab in there for you. I didn't know it was shred season. How long is the sprint? 20 seconds. 20 seconds, okay. That's about my turn. Your turn off the treadmill, we'll come up. She won't, she won't, my mom went over speed. <laughs> Training with her is like going to war. What the hell is that? Jump jack! What the heck is a pop jack? I don't know this war steering lingo. Then jump back out. Then jump back out. Oh. Keep going! Okay, then we'll do a little ab. On one side. Oh, okay. Yes, Sergeant. Put your leg up. Do you need a little cold compress? Yeah. You're full of it today. Come on. Okay. You okay, honey? Hi. Should we do another couple? Yeah. Good job. I think we need to work on your endurance. I've been out of the game for a bit. Where have you been? Yeah. So again, hit cardio is great, but you gotta mix in some other other things, like you wanna work on your endurance and longer rides because you don't, wanna be the, you don't wanna be the only one at the finish line, right? So always incorporate, if you can, a mixture of HIIT cardio and some steady state cardio. Yeah. Okay, please refrain your tears okay. from this order. So um, can I get a, a green tea, just green tea green for a drink? Tea, yeah. yeah, and then can I get a plate of egg whites? Egg whites for me? Yeah, and then instead of hash browns, can I do tomato slices? And that's it. No toast. Yeah. Just whatever flavor, just remove it. You know? Yeah. Myth number three is that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which is a debunked myth, but it's still gonna be my wedding vow. I think we have all kind of fallen for that one growing up as kids, which is why I can't trust tigers, rabbits, or the Irish. But the belief on this one is that when you have breakfast, you're kickstarting your metabolism and putting your body in a fat burning state for the entire day. That is not true. Take breakfast, cut it in half. It's literally a break fast. It's your first meal of the day. It doesn't matter when you have it. As long as you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna lose some weight. But I will suggest if you're trying to build muscle to spread out your meals evenly throughout the day with the same amount of protein to keep your muscle protein synthesis levels elevated. This definitely does not beat coffee, that is for sure. Myth number four is that green tea burns fat. I mean, while it might have some properties that help you burn fat, you still need to incorporate it with a healthy diet and exercise. This alone cannot do it for you. People who think that are the same type of people that think standing on an escalator is cardio. Like a lot of things, my inclinations for tea lean towards black. I'm still pretty good. Really? I mean, I don't know how much of a taste test I can do for you guys. All I can say is that swapping hash browns for tomato slices is like putting a go-kart engine in a Corvette. That's not something you should ever do. Put a little bit of tomato, a little bit of egg white. Guess the job done. Hey, hey, hey. Today's workout is gonna involve a ton of reps and very minimal rest, which is territory 
I never really visit. Because myth number five is that when you want to burn fat, you got to change up your routine, you got to increase the rest, decrease your rest times to increase your heart rate to burn more fat. And while there is kind of some truth to that, all you're really doing is turning your weightlifting sessions into just more cardio. So if you want to keep your muscle, you got to train the same way that you did to actually build it. So separate the two, but when you're in the gym, train hard, train heavy. I got 145 on the bar, and normally for me, that's easy three sets of 10 with adequate rest. But now we're gonna do 30 seconds rest, and we're gonna see what happens to that three sets of 10. So typically I would rest three minutes, 30 seconds. And you're gonna see every set. I'm gonna do some shadow boxing to my sets. Three, two, one, let's go, set two. So I literally just got five reps on the second set. I lost half of my reps from a set, from cutting my rest times from three minutes to 30 seconds. That is so much volume that you're leaving behind right there. Three, two, one. Ten reps, set one. Five reps, set two. Three reps, set three. I literally lost a whole set of my shoulders by decreasing the rest time. Train the same, do not cut the rest time. Do not turn this into cardio. Lift hard, lift heavy. Next exercise, we got 15 lateral raises, super set, with 30 seconds of skipping, with 30 second rest, four to five sets. See, at this point, I'm failing due to cardiovascular reasons, not from muscular failure, which is not what you want in a weightlifting session. We have done some front delt work with our press, we've done our side delts, and we've done our rear delts, but now we're gonna do some more with a seated and machine press because myth number six, guys, is that more is always better. That is definitely not true, especially when it comes to fitness and reaching your goals because when you do too much, you can get injured and get things called rhabdo if you do too many things. So you gotta do the most effective volume that you can handle in order to grow. Same thing for cardio, the most effective amount that you can do to recover every single day and see your fat loss goals, you really wanna do the least amount possible when losing fat. Really, you wanna do it the least amount. You wanna have the least calorie deficit, the least amount of cardio, the least amount of exercises to make it part of your life, not make it consume your life. reps. Damn, 15 reps. The only spot reducing that I know of personally is removing donuts from Tim Hortons, but people seem to think that you can spot reduce fat. Unless you have a Kardashian budget, you cannot do that. And unfortunately, where you have stubborn fat in your body is usually the last place to go when you're trying to lose fat. Like I hold a lot of my fat right in my lower back and my legs, and I guarantee you if I cut per show eventually one day that it will be the last to go. So you gotta just stick with it, it will come off, just stay consistent and be patient. But you cannot spot reduce fat. You're gonna have a shredded six pack after this one. I hate training abs. I'm being one of those guys at the gym right now. Everyone plug your nose. For the post-workout meal, we are having some canned tuna. Uh, channeling our inner Christian Bale, but he was pretty shredded for the machinist to be fair, right? I mean, he was pretty lean. He was pretty lean. So accompanying my canned tuna, we also have some fruit, which I cannot have because myth number seven 
is that fruit makes you fat. Though the way I enjoy fruit, it doesn't make a dent to my caloric intake. So here you go, Kofi. That's about a good size. People demonize fruit because there's sugar in it without realizing it's naturally occurring sugar. And they pair it with other things like Pop-Tarts and marshmallows with the white sugar but it's not even remotely the same. There's a lot of benefits to having fruit. There's vitamins, there's minerals, there's fiber, and it hydrates you. So I don't recommend cutting fruit out. There's always a place for everything. It's called moderation, guys, okay? Everyone's looking at me at the gym like they hate me. For lunch today, we got a bass of filet with some asparagus. This literally looks like if Satan wrote you a meal plan for a cut. Like, I don't even know if there's a terminology for it, but this is like the opposite of a death row meal. Like I can practically hear it telling me that this black pepper I'm putting on it is too spicy. So myth number nine, so we're at nine now, not eight. I made a mistake before. There's just too many myths being busted in this video. But myth number nine is that you need to eliminate carbs. You don't, all carbs are worthy. All carbs are valid guys. So don't, don't discriminate. So you definitely do not need carbs to build muscle. However, it'll give you an amazing pump besides giving a stranger $50. So this is gonna be my lunch. No carbs other than trace from the asparagus. You got some protein in the bassa filet. And I'm just kind of getting sad right now thinking about all the um, pumps that have been lost due to glycogen depletion. All right, you go for it. And I'll cry for you. I don't even know where to begin here. I just don't want to go into either of it, but we're gonna start with these little green shafts, the asparagus. We're gonna have some smelly pee tonight. So myth number 10 is that as long as you eat healthy, you can't gain fat. And people who say that are the same type of people that right after they say it, they go and down three avocados and more nuts than me on Valentine's Day. That is not the case. You can gain fat on literally anything. As long as, if you overeat it, you're gonna get fat. If you undereat Twinkies, there's literally a guy who ate Twinkies solely on a diet and he lost a lot of weight. So it's not about what you eat. Sure, it'll make you feel better, but it's also about how much you eat. Oh man, it's missing a lot of ingredients that make it taste good. Victoria, mm -hmm. I want you to look in here and tell me what do you see? Uh, chicken breast, rice, and like steamed broccoli. Is that the right answer? <laughs> I mean, technically yes, but what I see is I see darkness. And I also see your lunch. I'm not eating that though. But that's the point, you don't want it now, no. but you're gonna want it after. What are you gonna do to it? Myth number 11 is that people think that food that tastes good is bad for you, and that's nonsense. With a few small tweaks, you can make this taste amazing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this dish and transform it like it's the first day of school and she hit puberty over the summer, okay? So we're gonna turn this into a chicken stir fry. Does that sound good? Yeah. You know, sound confident. First order of business is we're gonna dice up this chicken breast and add it to the pan with the rice and the broccoli and get heated up and get it nice and then we're gonna be adding some flavor. When it comes to cooking, I don't really stick to rules. I rely on imagination. And this is all about making good food good, but making the good girls go bad, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an egg. We're gonna add some canned pineapple, only three tablespoons of some low sodium soy sauce. And then I know sesame oil has some calories, but you're only looking at one teaspoon of sesame oil, which adds a ton of flavor. And if you like it spicy, we're gonna add some sriracha, if I can find it. Going in with one egg, good quality protein and fat, right in the center, make a little well, and then scramble it up. Next up, we're gonna go with a little bit of some canned pineapple. So you might not be good for her, but with this, she'll be coming back for more, you know what I mean? So a couple chunks, the more, the better. So you got chicken fried rice. Uh -huh. I mean, I fried the rice, not the chicken, but there's chicken in the fried rice. Uh -huh. You got pineapple. I see that. Soy sauce. Everything's just kind of diced up. It's just elevated flavor, so I want to see what you think. And just keep in mind, this is like your last serving of carbs for the day. Why? Because myth number 12. What's that? I don't know. I haven't been you following have... this video. Where have I been? <laughs> no carbs after dark. It's what people believe. Isn't that crazy? Uh -huh. You know, as a kid growing up, you're, you're afraid of the, the monster under your bed. Mm. And as you grow up, it's like, you're afraid and you hear the story about carbs after dark. You can have carbs whenever you want, guys. Again, like I've said the entire video, 
It's all about the calories. You wanna get minimum protein requirements in, your minimum fat requirements so you can stay healthy with your hormones, and then fill the rest out with carbs if you want to. What are your thoughts? I was gonna say it would be hilarious if it was still bad, but this is actually delicious. I'll give you, for the fact that it's like healthy, 10. Really? I don't know. Everyone says doing. on the internet, yeah. you can't be a food critic and give it a 10. I'm not a food, not. Am I a food critic? Well, I say I am. Actually, I guess that's true. Yeah. I say I'm a food critic and I give it a 10. I'm You're just like, it's good. It's a 10. Yeah, I like okay. that. Okay, so we are going to wrap it up here with myth number 13. 13 reasons why. Here is your tape. And that is, you always have to be hungry when you're on a diet. And I can totally understand why people think that because what people do is they follow all these myths that we were doing today, which makes you hungry. There's a right way to do it, guys, and there's a wrong way to do it. Everything today is definitely the wrong way. You know, it's a very simple formula to lose body fat. You gotta eat in calorie deficit, you gotta train hard the same way you did to build the muscle. You gotta do some cardio to offset so you don't eat too little calories. And that's really all there is to it. It's not that complicated. People make it complicated on the internet. So you buy programs, you buy these diets, and you just believe all these crazy things. But it's really, again, like I just said, very, very simple. So hopefully this video helped you guys out a ton in your fat loss journey. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to drop it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.